Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in again to the next episode in the series. The last episode we went over, uh, or we introduced fragments, we created two of our own, the list and detail fragments that are going to um, soon replace the main activity and then the detail activity. Um, so if we jump back over to the documentation that we reviewed in the last episode, we talk about, um, or we see a little bit of code here about actually adding our fragments to the activity uh, and then allowing, you know, at that point we'll allow the fragments to take over and, and render the UI and stuff like that. So um, this is kind of a, an additional check here that this, um, I believe we talk about it here, yeah, yeah. it talks about it here uh, in the documentation. It's basically has to do with just like rotating the screen, making sure things aren't duplicated and whatnot, but we're not really going to worry about that right now. Uh, we're just going to focus on the actual fragment implementation. So we're going to go ahead and uh, basically copy this. So we'll use the support fragment manager to add our new fragment in place and uh, we'll go from there. So support fragment manager, it's native to the activity, the fragment activity class uh, and it's just the fragment manager that you need to use in order to uh, add or, or do what's called a fragment transaction which you can see that as we run this commit block we're actually inside of a fragment, fragment transaction at this point. So we're going to go ahead and use the add function and uh, reference our fragment container view and a new list fragment. Uh, one thing to note here though, a set reordering allowed. Um, this is something new, but they suggest doing it. So we're going to go ahead and do it. And if you want to command click in and read about it, uh, it, it it'll explain what it's doing, uh, but essentially it just makes certain transactions or certain operations within a single transaction uh, optimized as much as possible. So it's a good thing to do. So we'll just go ahead and do that um, as well. But at this point, once this code runs, we'll actually have added a new list fragment to our, um, to the main activity, uh, which will load this uh, layout file, but at the moment it's just, you know, a naked recycler view. So we're going to have to go ahead and basically copy over a lot of this stuff that's happening. Um, and some of this stuff we got to clean up because this is no longer relevant because uh, this recycler view is no longer a part of our activity main. We just we just have this fragment container view. So um, we can, we'll keep the list at the activity level, but we can go ahead and remove this from uh, the companion object and prevent it from being static now. But we will keep it public so that our fragments will have the ability to um, access it for sure. And we're going to have to, uh, let's just split this so we can work a little faster. We're going to take our adapter, we're going to move it into the uh, list fragment. We're going to keep this, but we're going to change it. Keep this. We'll We'll have to figure something out about that. But this makes sense. Uh, and then what we're going to need is we're going to have to basically copy this, put it in on view created. Now soccer tile list, we're going to have to make um, going to make a variable here to hold that. Um, except we're going to do something here by basically setting the get and we're going to say um, activity as main activity soccer tile list. And we're just going to force this one to be uh, null. Yeah, um, so basically this is a uh, another helpful Kotlin tool where you can define a variable and actually define things about the getters and setters. Um, so essentially anytime that we reference within this fragment the soccer tile list object, it's going to go ahead and run this code. So whether we reference it here in our view created or at some later point in some other lifecycle uh, life callback, it will actually basically run this code, which is going to um, fetch our activity, which is a native um, function to the fragment class, cast it as a main activity, which we're going to have here as a main activity, 
and then we're going to call soccer tile list. So this is going to actually reference this field here. Um, so we kind of have this relationship between the list fragment and the main activity, and we're able to do sort of this brute force casting here because we know that this fragment is going to exist in the main activity. Um, you know, for now it's okay, but you know, as you can imagine, if this were to be added to a different activity, this code would crash here. So we'll need to be wary of that, but at some later point. Um, and then as well here, we're going to set the interface for the soccer tile adapter, which is, uh, you know, holds these two function, these two callback uh, uh, functions. We're going to set it as the main activity because we already have that implemented here. And that means that even within the fragment, uh, within the fragment, we have our adapter. Within that adapter, when anything gets uh, interacted with, that interface gets invoked. It'll actually bubble its way up to the activity level, and then at that point, we'll be able to, you know, instead of switching screens here, we'll switch fragments and stuff like that. So, um, all good there. Uh, we just need to read, you know, change this a little bit. Find view by ID is a function that's native to the activity, um, but you can actually invoke it on a particular view. And at this point, as we reviewed in the last video, this view here that's getting passed in in the on view created is the inflated version of your layout file. So we're telling it to, you know, find the recycler view. And then similar to, well, you know, we could probably just copy this, cut this entire thing out. Similar to the activity, we're just going to go ahead and uh, tell this uh, fragment to notify the adapter of its changes and, and then, um, you know, display the UI basically. So we can go ahead and remove all of this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just comment this out because that's no longer what we want it to be doing. And then on favorite clicks, we'll leave it. Um, Yeah, so we'll leave it as is, but we're going to have to clean that up as well. Um, so let's go ahead and run this and see how we make out. Um, ah. We're going to have to change uh, a little bit of this detail activity because it's trying to reference some things here so eventually we're just going to remove this entire uh, eventually just going to go ahead and remove this entire activity so we don't really need to worry about this being too beautiful um, so we're just going to go ahead and comment that code out that was being problematic and we'll move on and as you can see here we're actually basically right back to where we were uh, you know a couple episodes ago where we were within the main activity everything's running but now this is actually um, our fragment that is doing all of this work, and it's basically our activity that's just sitting there, um, you know, housing this fragment. Uh, we can demonstrate that by, let's say we wanted to change the toolbar title so that we know that it's actually the fragment running. Um, again, we can cast our activity as the main activity, and we will say uh, support action bar. Again, it's a nullable field, so we're going to have to uh, use the question mark. And so we'll have EPL home in all caps here instead of just EPL home lowercase. And then when we go ahead and rerun it, we'll see that we're actually at EPL home with all capitals. So this, uh, when this activity is created, it actually has the title of you know being set to EPL home. And then at a later date, once this uh, fragment transaction happens and the code has added this fragment, this list fragment to the main activity, uh, you know, this lifecycle callback will run at some later point after this has run. And then uh, that's why we're basically like overwriting what the action bar title is. Uh, so with that in mind, we can actually just go ahead and remove that. And uh, now our activity is starting to kind of slim down to exactly what it is. Uh, or what it should be, right? Let's handle the on click here, the learn more button being clicked at the moment, you know, nothing nothing actually happens. Same thing with it being favorited. So we're in this broken state, but we're gonna uh, clean that up in no time. So 
Again, we'll get our support fragment manager. We're going to go ahead and commit a new transaction. I guess we're going to do this set reordering allowed. True. And then um, we're going to say add to the container view a detail fragment, right? Which is kind of what we were doing here. We were navigating the user to the different activity, uh, notifying them of some particular uh, you know, object, uh, or sorry, in this case, it was the ID. So we'll go ahead and do something very similar, uh, but let's just see where we get with just that simple implementation. Oh yeah, wow. So we've gone ahead and added an, a fragment on top of this other fragment here. Um, so if we go ahead and say, what else did they have to hit add? Yeah, so I think the one that we're looking for here is replace. It's just a different uh, uh, call that we're looking for to add a, a new fragment. And so you can see that we actually go to a totally new screen. This is that broken state because we don't do anything uh, at the moment, but you know it does resemble this layout here uh, with, with nothing populated essentially. So we're gonna have to go ahead and, and fix that up. As you can see, we don't do anything at the moment in the detail fragment, um, but we are telling it to go there. And if we, if we navigate back, yeah, it, the, the back stack is kind of broken at this point. We don't have uh, any understanding that the, there was a previous fragment there. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of cleanup, but once we get everything uh, up and running again, we'll be, we'll be good. So um, let's see here. Now we're doing too much at this moment here. We're gonna go ahead and just create a bundle to notify this fragment of which one has been, which uh, soccer tile has been, or, or the ID has been uh, selected. So we can say put string in our bundle. So it kind of works pretty similar to this put extra function um, that we had for the uh, intent. So we'll go ahead and take this and just put this right here. Um, and then we can kind of, yeah, no, I can't delete all of that. I need the first line of that. Um, and then the new, the, the arguments here is gonna be the bundle, right? So instead of embedding all of this in the intent that we were doing for uh, activity to activity navigation, we actually create an object that's called a bundle uh, and we set the fragments arguments to be this bundle, and then it works basically the same way on the other side. So you can, uh, we'll make a, uh, we'll make a class level variable here, a global variable that's gonna say soccer tile ID. Um, uh, you know what, we're just gonna actually name it soccer tile. And that's going to be a soccer tile. We'll say by lazy. right we're not able to reference it we need to call find where it the ID equals oh, sorry. that okay so there's a lot going on here I'm gonna go ahead and unpack this um, but again another interesting syntax or, or functionality of the Kotlin uh, programming language is this thing called by lazy and so although this is declared as a global variable for the class, 
it actually isn't going to go ahead and be instantiated until the first time that it is referenced. So if we never reference this soccer tile, it actually won't um, you know, consume memory. It won't actually be uh, created by the system until at some later point you know, we do soccer tile dot something. So uh, we're going to go ahead and actually log it at this point. But uh, if we didn't, just call two string on it and see what happens. Um, actually, that is a data class, so that'll work. Um, so at this point, when on view created runs, the since we're referencing the soccer tile, this code will run and it'll run just once, which is convenient. So it's kind of like a a nifty way to say, you know, at some point, whenever we're going to reference this, you know, run this code to actually initialize this variable. But with that being said, you need to consider some, uh, you know if you were to have a race condition or something along those lines that you know maybe this code could potentially break so in this case it's pretty safe to do um, but it is possible that you know we uh, you, you could run into some issues so instead of forcing that to be non-null let's actually just create a blank soccer tile if that is the case but again when we uh, you know log this statement out it's gonna run this and so we're gonna go ahead and say activity as main activity we've seen this before get our reference to our soccer tile list and then we are going to find the one whose ID matches the ID that we've passed in here in the bundle from the uh, main activity. So now we're kind of communicating between these two fragments here uh, you know because we've made the main activity the interface for this adapter so when they click the learn more this will actually run and then it'll find the correct tile in the list put the correct ID in the list and then tell the, the frag, this fragment to uh, you know, be constructed and passing in the correct arguments. So we've communicated between these two fragments via the main activity. And if we were to go ahead and run this, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to have a breakpoint, but if we were to go ahead and run this and click learn more on this one, you can see, although the UI is you know, completely broken, we're not doing anything with it, that the tile itself is the Manchester City tile and all of the data here uh, you know, matches exactly what we are, um, you know, what we would expect it to, to what we would expect it to be. So um, we will clean this detail fragment up and we'll kind of you know, take a lot of uh, a lot of the code here that's that's running this to um, to basically populate the detail fragment and, and make it function as we would expect clean up a little bit of the back stack and then uh, you know kind of we'll, we'll summarize everything that we've done so far and take a look at how things have changed uh, and then you know maybe some benefits that that come from this kind of an architecture so thanks for sticking with me I hope to see you in the next one